welcome to Small Talk with Raincraft. I'm Subha Chandra Shekharan, a career growth coach. Small Talk is for current and aspiring leaders who want to level up their career and their professional lives and want to do it mindfully. I'm Hasita. I'm a marketing consultant and I'm Subha's co-host. Over the next 20 odd minutes, we'll be talking to you about personal leadership, professional growth and how to go about nurturing your career. Join us as we have some career lifting conversations. Asita, I noticed a new little hashtag on your LinkedIn bio. Did I? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> it's made its appearance after quite some time, I must say. Which one is this though? I heard you're a podcaster. <laughs> Oh god, are you the only person who knows this? I don't know. Yeah, but it took me a while I think to just accept that part of the identity because I didn't see myself as a podcast host at all. I saw myself as a person who does podcasts. Mm. I think those two things are so different, mm. right? Uh and therefore the struggle and sometimes I think hey today there are these three things. Tomorrow there'll be three other things. At least I know that much about myself. Um so what do i say who am i right mm-hmm. and it's not an easy so when someone says oh tell me about yourself what do you do my immediate reaction is oh i'm a marketing consultant and then they say oh can you take a look at my website and can you just quickly suggest some fixes and it breaks my little heart because i mean i would want to do that at some point but that's not the only thing i do right and uh, you want that to be a small part of what you do very small tiniest no so i think there's a lot for us uh, personally for both of us it's been like you said it's work in progress and we're still getting there and it's going to take a while to yeah. just figure out what that quick pitch or intro to ourselves is uh, because sometimes we are working on ourselves too much and things are changing oh man seriously is that like uh, some kind of infliction infliction that we suffer from like we forever reinventing ourselves i feel you know <laughs> and therefore not knowing what to say yeah right. So recently you know I had a some kind of uh, stage for some some event and there were a lot of uh, young folks in the room and I actually he- heard myself saying that you know you could call me a leadership coach a career growth coach an executive coach a you know falana falana coach but net net I coach like you know <laughs> even I'd had enough of <laughs> explaining what I do yeah and but that's the funny thing right the more abstract the role becomes the harder it's to explain to people what we do and sometimes we have very and on in fact sometimes very often we have very little of their attention spans because we are probably one of 10 people pitching something mm-hmm. or we are pitching in context where they are not expecting to be pitched to it's like finding a celebrity in an elevator and asking for a role in the next movie right so okay. that's the kind of time that people often have So then if I ha- don't have my 10 second story my 15 second story then it's really difficult and I keep thinking oh but I've lived this entire life and I have all these different things that I want people to know about me so which one do I prioritize really Yeah no I think let's spend a little time over it because we have to break it down for ourselves because god knows our pitches could always use a little bit of help and yeah uh, revision if I may call it <laughs> <laughs> Yes how to pitch like you said it's about that um, 30 seconds one minute or a couple of minutes that you get with somebody new or you know a friend says hey meet meet hasita and you want to just say the right things in the next few seconds but it's uh, not that easy and mm-hmm. i think there's no no harm in admitting that it's something each of us have to constantly prepare in our minds yeah yeah you know? because there's always this notion that um, it's about me and mm-hmm. of course i know me and what i do yeah. and so i'll wing it each time ha huh, and therefore in doing that sometimes you're losing the important data points right yeah. because the brain is automatically assuming that the other person knows x about me and therefore i'm building but quite often i mean literally they probably just met us yeah no many times i've over the past especially you know outside of a corporate career i've found myself very disappointed with the way i've introduced <laughs> myself because you, yeah. uh, either you're trying to say too much mm. or you finish and you realize hey i hardly conveyed the depth or breadth of what yeah. i do well call me evil but i've also resented the way other people have introduced <laughs> themselves so well there very even the truth <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. No, I think the first uh, step is really uh, saying, okay, this is an overview of me and reading the room and the context. So true. So true. I think sometimes also even when we have prepared and when we have a good story and we have all these slides and we want to present, uh, sometimes you enter the room and you know that it's already not going to work. You need to pull something else out of the yeah, head. Yeah. Right. And maybe that's where preparing two, three alternative versions and knowing what I'm saying to whom really does make a difference, I guess. Yeah. And I think also trying to find a personal way to connect with that audience, something that's uh, relevant to that group. Mm -hmm. And that may not be part of your intro somewhere else. Right. 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 Like for coaching, I find that uh, when it's when it's a young group or even young to middle management, when you talk about the fact that, hey, a lot of the icons that you see today, be it sporting icons, uh, you know, people who excel in their field, uh, they all have a coach. So why don't mm -hmm. you? Right? Oh, that's interesting. I'd actually never thought of that. And that resonates with a lot of folks. But yeah, yeah it you need to think about the audience and its context and what's the worldview that they have mm -hmm. uh, and then arrive at some of the things right like I uh, in a room of CEOs or, or high potential people like I really can't say you know hey I sense deep childhood trauma and how can I help you <laughs> Right? Imagine <laughs> if you ever do that, please send me a video. <laughs> Actually, this should be a social experiment. <laughs> but, but that's how I, like you said, being on the other side of some pitches, that's how I feel <laughs> sometimes. Like they, they're accosted me, yeah, and they are, um, you know, dumping something on me which I have absolutely no interest in. I mean, let's be honest. Why do we have internal KPIs on how many conferences we'll attend in a quarter? Let's be very honest. <laughs> Like we do one and then we never do it again. Yeah. I think now that I'm more, you know, into the sustainability conversation and discovery phase and I'm like, save the whales, save the oceans, all that is happening, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's well received all the time. Like sometimes I feel like you're forcing the other person to feel guilty rather than empowering them. So... You know, confessions of somebody who's been made to feel guilty by the sustainability tribe very often. Right. Uh, you know, especially in stalls that have been set up and somebody rushes up to me and starts gushing about composting. Mm -hmm. And it's just not in my headspace or yeah. I don't know what it involves. I don't know what it means. And then I have to mm -hmm. kind of um, say no, not yet there. But you know, the funny thing is knowing what I know about you, if I told you, hey, you compost will firstly not stink and secondly, you can grow more plants, I think you would have fallen for that. Correct. If you said it's, there's a convenient way to do it. Right. Right. right? Like I'm not digging a hole in a backyard that I don't have and then, right. you know, like because that's my view of something. Mm -hmm. But if you tell me that, hey, th what I'm really selling is an easy way to do this. So mm -hmm. do it in your home balcony, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, I, I'd fall for it yeah. quite easily. And also in a professional context, I think there are two very clear places where pitching becomes a life and death kind of scenario, right? Or let's just say this stuff gets real. <laughs> I'm <laughs> trying not to swear. Uh, and one of them is when you're interviewed mm -hmm. for a ro role or a job or even a contract for that matter. And I think the other one, which is probably an even bigger use case, is when you have to get funded. Mm. right? And we all know that these can sometimes be endless loops of repeating the same stories about yourself over and over again. But I'm just thinking, can I be more prepared for these things? Yeah. No, I think a large part of uh, the interview prep slash coaching that I do is really about reminding people or making them understand that, hey, this needs a lot of preparation, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because again, when you're interviewing for a job, many people go in with the notion that, hey, there's a resume. Uh, it's about my life and my work and I'm going to very easily answer right. it. But at the very first, tell me about yourself, they really fumble. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes sets the tone. See, um, what are we really trying to achieve in that response? It's one, uh, give a very nice overview of the person sitting in that chair. Today. Who are you today? Yeah. You know, what are those threads that tie your various life and career decisions that have brought you to where you are today? Um, why, you know, what's, what's the, what gives me credibility mm -hmm. for this uh, role or opportunity or this funding opportunity that I'm kind of asking for? Um 
what's my area of expertise, mm. right? Because in that kind of range of things that I could have potentially done, I might be really good at one or two things, mm. uh, which are more relevant to what I'm applying for or you know asking for. And what's my area of interest now? Like what's exciting me now? What do I want to be doing? And why am I here looking at this opportunity with right. you versus X other opportunities out there? Right. So that's a, that is a lot to pack in, in let's say a minute or two. Uh, but if you prepare for it, it can be done very nicely and it can be done in a way that holds the other person's interest. But many times I find people um, that, and this is in the in the you know preparatory sessions that I'm having with somebody, um, they've not thought it through. So it they immediately fall back to, okay, uh, I was born in a small town uh, and then my parents did this and this. Hey, the job is not for your parents. Mm -hmm. Like this is prime airtime right. uh, in the first few seconds of your interaction. Um, and I went to so-and-so school and, you know, they just kind of dig that hole a little deeper and deeper yeah. till they actually come to the core of what they do and who they are and mm -hmm. uh, what's their area of interest or why. So you're right, it's uh, it needs preparation. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot of it, as it would seem, because I'm assuming it's different for different contexts as well, right? So it can't be that I have this narrative. Mm. And also we as people change, no? Somewhere mm. that has to reflect as well. It can't be that the same story that sustained me five years ago yeah. is no longer the story of my life today. And so maybe constant revision, iteration, and it's not an easy question to answer finally. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, I honestly still uh, yeah, struggle with it. Same. There's like multiple versions floating in my head and you're trying to figure out which is the one. And I literally look at the other person and decide what to bring. <laughs> it works sometimes, it doesn't at others, but... Yeah. So, you know, for me, I'm trying to... Uh, you know, I realize I'm trying to pack in multiple things that I want the other person to know. That, hey, there there was a career that I had in a certain space. Mm. And then I made a transition. Even after I made the transition, I was doing two, three things. And then now I'm doing more and more of one or two things. Yeah. And But this is the thread that ties it all together, that my deep interest is in people development mm. um, at the workplace. Mm. And, you know, my interest is in working with professionals to, so that they can be just a little bit better today. Mm. But to tie that thread, mm. you have to... You have to show them how you yourself got there. Yeah, and also exactly, right? The thread that I'm noticing there is of you saying, it took me a while. Hmm. I hmm. figured this out as well. And hmm. I think there is something of value there, right? Because you're saying as a coach, I'm always going to be supportive of that journey, essentially. Because I've been in that space. Correct, right? correct. Yeah, so you're right. Like sometimes when the same conversation is with, let's say somebody from a corporate hmm. and I am pitching my coaching services for a group of their leaders, mm. right? So the same introduction has to say that, hey, I bring in a lot of uh, business expertise right. and uh, I bring in a lot of empathy into what really happens in corporates and the struggles and challenges that middle to senior level folks may be facing. Mm -hmm. But it's important to put that in, right? Because that, that's why I'm, I'm sitting standing, there with yeah, you. Yeah, I'm, that's yeah. why I'm there and that's uh, adds to my credibility and my expertise. Mm. And that's what I want to be doing. Mm -hmm. So what's your pitch as a podcast host then? Ouch, you put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for it. Or rather, I was, I was I sprung it on you before you could spring it on me. I, I see that. I see that. No, so what I've learned to do, um, and that's why, you know, I, while, while I was uh, making fun of you adding hashtag broadcaster, <laughs> it took me a while to add that too and to remind myself. And so now... Uh, I'm getting better at it. Most of my introductions, I'm able to end with, say, I also enjoy uh, listening to a lot of podcasts and I run and co-host too in the space of coaching and Interesting. marketing. And I mean, I say it a little better, honestly. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to steal that, but okay. <laughs> but now I've learned to put that in at the end mm. and uh, add that to the entire kind of story that I'm telling. But we sometimes forget what Always. we do and what interests Always. us. Yeah, right? totally depends on our mood, right? Correct, yeah. correct. And many times uh, you assume that, uh, hey, why would they be interested in the 
podcast piece or हाँ. the writing that I do somewhere or the uh, you know volunteer work that I do somewhere else. But hey, if that's you, just say it. Yeah, yeah. True. I mean, at least it'll make you a more nuanced individual, I suppose. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. yeah, I do save the whales. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to. Uh. That's the idea. <laughs> Correct. So let's just like uh, own it and say it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But um, I think, in a way, what what you know, we want you listeners to take away is um, when you do get airtime. in any kind of forum you know that the the very stereotypical stuck in the lift with your ceo kind of uh, 60 seconds you know even rooms that you enter and there are two three new faces in that room or you get on to a conference call with a new client mm. um, just do prepare for these situations which you know are likely in your life fair enough right and yeah i do want to be noticed right i want my yeah. work to be noticed and i want to be recognized as xyz and yeah i mean if that's going to take a certain amount of practice in front of the mirror then that's what it's going to take and practice with my dog or whatever you know right, finally right. and even the nuances of our language matter so much i was uh, you know working with a young individual and helping um, him for certain um, college interviews mm-hmm. for higher education and it helped to point out that quite a few of the words that he was using would not really immediately connect with somebody sitting in the us right. on a college interview panel right words like you know instead of hometown when you say native right right, right. or you say vernacular mm-hmm. uh, these are words that immediately don't, don't have that same meaning that they have for us yeah. so remembering who the audience is and practicing for that audience is so important so true especially in today's connected world i think it's yeah. and it goes both ways i think that cultural appreciation is a two way street Correct. so something to be mindful of for sure yeah so i think uh, there is a lot that we can talk about in terms of uh, pitching especially investor pitches i think that's a whole other ball game mm. uh, where you're trying to you know get somebody else's money <laughs> but um the the simple takeaway for today is that uh, there are so many situations where you find yourself meeting new people and uh, you know that broadly these are the three four kind of buckets that they'll fall into right and these are the three four kind of audiences that you typically meet you know social school groups uh, alumni groups you know parent groups right um, work groups and you know different kind of work groups etc etc maybe have a few versions ready that you've uh, you know not really rehearsed and kind of memorized but you have a few versions ready with those bullet points of what you want to cover in that right and what's the flow and structure that will be useful for that audience and definitely it leaves people with a much better idea of who you are and it leads to i find a more meaningful conversation after that yeah and it's okay i mean sometimes we're all human we'll all have those pitches which have absolutely no impact on the other yeah, person very much <laughs> which is fine you know <laughs> which is fine just yeah. uh, you know shake it off and on to the next one yes <laughs> <laughs> okay that's it from us guys see you soon with a lot more small talk and career lifting conversations bye hey small talkers Thank you for listening. We love bringing these episodes to you. So please do get on Apple or Spotify and leave us a rating or review or just follow us and help us grow the show. You can find more details about this specific episode and us in the show notes and on our website. Thanks again and bye.